Hello everyone. This video is about introduction to Node.js. The presentation includes what is Node.js, difference between the Apache web server and the Node.js. Uh, the main functionality of the Node.js is on the event-based processing. So what is all that about and how do we install and set up the Node.js framework on your local system, followed by building your own application stack using Node.js and a couple of examples. What is Node.js? Uh, Node.js is a server-side JavaScript programming framework and as well as a, a library, in the sense that it uses Google's V8 JavaScript engine. It is basically meant for handling the input and output operations with the help of your JavaScripts, which have been on the events that are occurring on your web applications. So the JavaScripts on the server side, which will be basically a communication between the client and the server will happen with the help of the same language features. So in the previous videos, you have seen that the JavaScript is used for the front page or your front end application development. But the JavaScript as well, we can use it for our server side programming in the sense that we can make use of the JavaScript to do the backend processing for various application, web application developments. So in order to support the web, uh, web applications at the back end, Node.js provides several functionalities and it is used for uh, uh, various purposes. So servers normally use thread-based uh, thread communication. So a thread is invoked whenever a, a particular request has been made from the client to the server. And the thread will handle the uh, corresponding request and the response is given to the client uh, for serving the particular request. So it will involve a lot of blocking the IO requests that are coming from various clients. So this can be easily handled with the help of Node.js. That is the advantage of Node.js uh, handling several requests, that is the concurrent execution of several requests that are coming from a client with, to the server can be easily handled with the help of Node.js on your web applications. So the Node.js serves each request in an eventual loop that can handle the simultaneous request coming from various users. If you look to the pictorial representation where Node.js falls into the, our web application development, so the Node.js is basically a server which is providing the interaction between your front ends. Uh, with, if you are having certain JavaScript frameworks such as AngularJS and, and, and as well as with your database servers. So the Node.js provides a framework as well as a library which can provide the interactive features between the client request and the server processing. So most specifically this Node.js we use in our today's web application developments with the help of a mean stack. So what you have seen on the previous stacks are basically the Linux, Apache, MySQL and the PHPs or the Windows environment of, of Apache, MySQL and PHP. Whereas the Node.js can be uh, easily been used with a stack known as mean stack. So the abbreviation for the mean is that M stands for MongoDB. So it's basically a database system for your web application, followed by the Express. Uh, this is basically a framework which provides the front end uh, and user developments as well as the user functionalities can be easily handled, followed by the Angular JS. So it is also can be used for your uh, front ends uh, uh, designing and development of the web applications and the back end is itself your node.js so please remember you are using node.js to run outside your browser so without uh, the functionalities to be run on the browser we can make use of this node.js so if you compare node.js with apache web server node.js is faster than apache that's the advantage of using the node.js application framework. So Node.js can handle tons of concurrent requests which are coming from various clients across the particular network. So if you just as instance of comparison between the Apache, which is having with the PHP as a parser at the back end, which can serve about uh, 3187 uh, requests per second, whereas Node.js can serve 5569 plus request in a second. So that is an advantage of having Node.js, which can serve more number of users at the same 
time. More number of user requests can be served at the same time. So Node.js allows JavaScript scores to run outside the browser. So that is the advantage of Node.js. So you can run your programs, which will help you to make your web application without the help of your browser processing. So Node.js is an open source server environment and it can run on various platforms such as Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac OS, and Raspbian operating system, and other set of electronic devices which are very miniature in sizes. So if you look to the Node.js, so the Node.js main objective is to provide an easy way to build scalable network programs. So in the sense that uh, if you have a JavaScript, which is includes various uh, programs or functionalities to provide certain kind of network operations or network functionalities, or in simple terms, network uh, uh, operations, where it can have certain uh, functionalities such as which are related to HTTP, which are related to your net, which are related to your operating systems or your processes, which are even related to your events that are occurring on your web applications with, with respect to your network functionalities. So please do remember, Node.js do not support the DOM functionality. Document object modeling manipulation cannot be done using your Node.js. And another important point is Node.js do not run on a graphical user interface, but it can run on the terminal. So let us see with a small example how we can run a yeah, Node.js with your own application. The important feature of the Node.js is to have the event-based processing. So normally a process on the web server will require uh, a certain request which is coming from the client. We'll have to wait for the IO operations to be completed for the requested client. It means whenever a user requests that an IO operations to be done by the server, the server will wait until the IO operation has been completed on the server. Usually this is going to lead us to have a certain blocking. Blocking in the sense that, of course, very a small, uh, unit of time here, but still it is a blocking here. So whereas the Node.js process each request as events, so there is an, a certain kind of feature called as asynchronous uh, processing. That is, once the event has been uh, generated, that is the event here, he is the user's request. So the event will take care of the backend processing without blocking the further other user requests that are coming to your server. So that event will be running an asynchronous job or an asynchronous function at the back end, so that once the event has completed its asynchronous processing and it will be triggered to the uh, event so that the next request can be processed for the other set of users. So there is no, pro here there's no uh, event that is going to happen in a blocking state. So that is the advantage of having a node.js, which helps us to have a non-blocking set of requests which are coming uh, from various users at the same time, which are basically meant for to do certain IO operations. In other terms, certain user interactivities or user interactions which are happening from the user, that is the input coming from the user and the processing has to be done at the server and the processing, uh, the requested process has to be given the response. So the request and the response which are coming basically for the users will be handled easily by the Node.js. Whereas the, uh, the, uh, Web servers such as PHP, uh, along with the PHP with Apaches and all will have to wait and is a lot of time consuming process is happening with respect to the set of uh, Apache, MySQL and PHPs. So that can be easily handled with the help of Node.js frameworks. So if you look to the pictorial representation, uh, an example of understanding a blocking versus non-blocking. So usually a web server such as Apache with PHP so whenever a request comes from the user, so the request is going to be handled by a thread by the your web server. So the thread is going to handle the file IOs with respect to the user's request. So during this process, the thread has to wait until the IO operations have been completed. So until then the thread is not uh, completed the requested file IO operations, the thread cannot be given to an another user. So here, Usually a web server handles one thread. So the user has to wait until his request is not serviced. The uh, thread cannot be given to an another user. But this problem can be overcome with asynchronous IO. So whenever a thread uh, is being initiated, 
So the thread is going to make use of certain process called as a callback, that is the response process. So that is being handled with the help of asynchronous processing, we call it as. So that is going to be handled by your Node.js, which runs in the background, which in turn serves several requests to be run simultaneously. So if you look here, uh, a simple example, if you want to read data from a file and you want to show the data and do other tasks, usually you write a program of your PHP uh, with the help of Apache server. So certain program will be something like this. You have to read a file, which is synchronously. Of course, you're reading the data from a sensors data file. That is something like test.txt. So once the, all the reading operations, once the, all the data has been read, then only you're going to show that to your user. That's what you're showing it to the log to the user and going to the next task. Whereas if you look to the non-blocking stage, you are reading data from the file. So the data is continuously happening in the background where in simple terms, the sensor data are getting simultaneously filled up on that particular file. So that is going to be handled by a function here. That function is basically an asynchronous function, which is running in the background. So once that function is keep on select collecting the data that is being given to this particular file, it is being shown to the user. So there is no blocking of that particular data uh, uh, which is coming from that particular file. So that is being easily handled with asynchronous IO operations. So that is the advantage of Node.js to have asynchronous uh, way of reading the data uh, for multiple requests that have been coming from various users. So basically the applications that you can make use for uh, designing and developing is basically Node.js, uh, something applications which are related to your web sockets, uh, which can serve several requests. So certain, uh, certain things that as advertisement servers, ad servers, uh, or you have to, if you want to make your own proxy servers, or if you want to have video and audio uh, data stream servers to be uh, served for several users at the same time, you can make use of this Node.js. Sometimes you may have to upload your file, very big file onto your web application, uh, using your web applications, which can also be served with using Node.js. So any real time, so any real time in the sense, the data which is continuously uh, pushing onto your uh, servers can be easily handled by your Node.js. So basically that is what your the data which is coming from various users. This data is basically your input and output operations. So when to use it, basically your chart and messaging up, uh, messaging operations, basically your IO operations, which are handling a real time uh, scenarios. Uh, so if you want to make your proxy service very intelligent and to put some security aspects onto this one and to run your uh, simultaneous applications, so very high concurrency for various users across the networks and which can act like your coordinators and communication hubs, you can use this Node.js for very well. So Node.js, what do you understand to start understanding? It supports your basic hypertext transfer protocol operations of get, post, put, and delete operations very easily. So please remember Node.js does really two things. One is it provides a runtime environment which can run your real-time applications very easily. And also it provides a library to interact with various other web applications, such as using your node package manager. We call it as NPM. NPM is the package manager for a JavaScript. The JavaScript those functionalities are all with, uh, with your, uh, your JavaScript functionalities. They are basically your APIs. So that you can use those APIs to make use to interact with various applications for various purposes such as your web applications or proxy servers, file uploadings, and doing various real-time operations. So the success stories, uh, Node.js has been uh, used widely for various, by various vendors such as LinkedIn, PayPal, Yahoo, Walmart, Uber. So all these people are using this Node.js very uh, successfully for a long time. Even their servers were uh, reduced, their infrastructure is reduced. So that is the advantage of using the nodes. So they make use of this Node.js very well. So let us uh, do some installation on our own uh, local system and build up our application stack using Node.js. You can download the Node.js from this particular web link. So this node.js.org, and you can go to that uh, website, the Node.js, and you select whatever the environment you are using, whether you are using Windows or Mac, so you can use uh, select all your Linux operating system, select the appropriate touch to bit and 62 bit operations and install it uh, uh, onto your local system. Once you install it on your local system, uh, let us uh, see whether you have installed successfully on the local system, how do you verify? So go to your command prompt. 
So once you go to your command prompt, uh, you can see, you can enter simple command, the node. So you can get the node.js. Uh, I have a little bit uh, older version, version 12.8. So here uh, you'll get a, a node prompt to, uh, which supports to help to type different uh, uh, commands, which are basically to run your node.js on your local server. So instead of uh, running your web server, we can make use of this Node.js, which can serve multiple requests, and those multiple requests can be handled in an asynchronous manner to serve uh, concurrently uh, uh, tons of user requests which are coming to your web applications. So you can make use of Node.js for various purposes. That's what we have seen it. So let us write a small program. So the program you can, uh, uh, start practicing here. So we make use of this. Uh, so let us see how you can write your own HTTP server. So you can build up your own HTTP server uh, without uh, your web server, such as you are without using the uh, Apache web server, you can write your own HTTP server. So using the JavaScript. So here the JavaScript functionality is this. So you're creating your own my HTTP, the variable, which of course requires your HTTP, uh, requires the HTTP module. So that is going to be included. And you are uh, using the function called create server. So the HTTP, your variable HTTP is uh, invoking the method, the create server. In turn, it is accessing your function. So that's anonymous function is basically your asynchronous function, which has two arguments. One is your request and the response. So here, in this particular basic example, you will try to understand that these request and response are your parameters. So this, you are going to use these parameters to display something onto your web browsers or onto your web applications. And please remember here, uh, we are listening onto a particular port. So this particular HTTP, you can have your own set of port numbers. So you can run, when you run this uh, program, you're going to use, make use of whatever you are written here. So the responses, just in this example, the response uh, ID is 200, it means it is uh, available and you are making it, uh, that's what 200 is basically for your okay, that is what, and that okay is given with the help of your content. The content type, what we are displaying is basically an hello world. So if you are displaying something on the web pages, you can push text slash HTML if you want to display your HTML page. And once you completed your responses, you can just end that response using the end method of your response parameter. So any request that is coming to your particular HTTP that is going to be handled by your response. So this is how you create your own HTTP server. Very simple comments. So let us see how do we write. You just write this particular uh, set of commands onto your editor. So once you write it on your editor, you save it on your respective folder. So I'm giving this basically a JavaScript file. So you're saving this file as a .js. So here in this, you are get just responding with a uh, text statement onto your web page. And you're listening, your server is listening to the port of uh, four eights. So once you write it and save it onto your editor, you can, uh, let me just go to this file and show you how you run this particular program. So go to the terminal point, yes. Control C. So let me go to the corresponding folder where I have saved Internet Technology DL. Big file, if you see here, so there is something server.js. So this server.js file is basically you can see it on this notepad editor, notepad plus plus of one. The program is sorry, this I have changed this one. Let me open file, new file. So 
So I create a variable HTTP, which is requires your module HTTP. So this is what you are HTTP. And this my HTTP is creating a server by invoking the asynchronous function with request and response parameter. And this asynchronous function is going to run in the background with various response dot write head. You are going to put the header values with your response as okay. And the content type is basically your text. The plain text. This is one writing to your response to the header. Then you are writing to your console response dot write. You are giving a statement node JS. Then again, your response is completed. That is the end function. So you are going to end this with the function is end and the function is closed. And that function is listening to. So this is where you can asynchronous where you can write it to something like 888. Nine, I'm changing the port number. If you want to, you can just see the response how it goes on. So you please save this one. Save as my HTTP server dot JS. So save this. So once you have saved this one, go to your Yes, now you can issue node is let me so node space my HTTP server dot yes. There is some syntactical error here on the program. So here the content type is giving me the error. Sorry, and this is a open brace. Yeah. Right, save it. So that's what the braces are not in your parameters. Once again, you run it. So now it is listening. So my HTTP server.js is running. You don't get any errors. So once it is now you go to your browser. So on the browser, you can type your local host followed by your port number, which you have given 8889. Now this is what you get the response. Hello, this is node, yes. Similarly, so once you are, so you can see this one, the server is running and that is been, the web is been, the server is running and the web application is displaying. That's what you are written in your asynchronous function. So you can stop this one, we'll see. So once you stop this one, you can as well run the other program. So the another example is basically, uh, this example is on the uh, file uploading. That's the second example, which you need to understand a little bit on the file uploading. So this one is similarly, you need to install your NPM that's 
the package called formidable so this package formidable once it is uh, npm install formidable you can use this command and he, similarly you are creating a server so this is basically the commands the javascript commands to upload your files onto your particular location where you want to upload it once so that is what you are written so your web uh, your form your form which is to be displayed on your web browser you are going to write it with your response dot write commands the methods so this this content is basically your html that's what you are seeing here in the previous example it is basically your normal text so the content time here in this example is basically your form that form contains an input type selecting the file to be uploaded onto a particular location so that is what and you are listening to another code called as 8888 let us see this example how we need to run it so here so i'm running node it is server dot js so this is now listening and go to your web browser so now you look to your people host 8888 now it will ask for the file to be chosen so you're running this server this is basically a javascript program which is now asking me to select the files so i'm selecting the file here uh, file something like uh, assignment 4 so this particular assignment 4 will be now or maybe some new file I let me create for you okay a new file something like a text document something like sample file to upload or the sample file to upload is the one which needs to be uploaded onto my so once the sample file upload.txt selected you click submit the file upload uploaded and has been moved you can see that one in your uh, the path which you have specified here the users under this i have stored yeah this is the file which has been coming from that particular location so you just change so but all this has been happening with node.js the server side scripting of javascript that is an advantage so you can run this up uh, you can use this node.js for various applications now the reference material what i have taken for this presentation and for this experimentation you can please refer to the node beginner book which is available on our university library website and as well as you can go to the official website of node.js and you can start understanding the commands and various purposes thank you